Okay, we are at the California Antiquarian Book Fair, Pasadena, California, February 9th, 2020. And we're sitting down with David Spillman of David Spillman Fine Books. It's a pleasure to sit down with you today, David. How are Thank you? Thank you, Kara. <laughs> um, we usually start by asking a little bit about your origins, where you were born, where you grew up, uh, what did family like look like, and uh, were you a reader as a child? So let's start at the very beginning. Okay. Uh, I was born in Burbank, California, raised all my life in the San Fernando Valley in Southern California. Uh, my mother's family was from Texas, so I had a very large extended family in Texas and used to visit them. Uh, my grandmother used to take me back during summers to Texas where I developed a Texas twang uh, slight uh, to my mother's enjoyment <laughs> and, uh, and learned an awful lot about the different, very, very different life in rural North Country, Texas than vibrant San Bernardino Valley, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went to college in uh, Orange County, uh, Cal State Long Beach, and then to USC for our master's degree in public finance. Ah. Spent my career uh, working for cities uh, as a finance director, assistant city manager, uh, and other levels of duties as required. Mm -hmm. And uh, a number of different cities, different types of cities, l large ones, small ones. I love working in smaller communities. Uh, worked with Mammoth Lakes when they first incorporated. Uh, learned how to ski and had a lot of fun. That was a vacation. Then my wife and I finally went to where we were meant to be, and that is Northern California. Mm. And we went to Sonoma County, started working with the city of Petaluma. Uh, we raised sheep out in the West County uh, between Sonoma, between Petaluma and Sebastopol. And I spent most of my municipal career in smaller cities up in Northern California. Then when I retired from day-to-day -day work, I wanted to continue to provide public service and went into consulting, providing consulting work for cities and special districts. And my main strength was mentoring and basically being called, when I was called in, it was to fix problems and issues and many of those dealt with people, problems and procedures and policies. Mm -hmm. And that was great fun. And then it came a time that, well, around that same time when I left day-to-day -day work, I began to decide that a third of my time was going to be spent developing being a bookseller. How did you even get there? Were you a reader this whole time? Were reader, you a collector this whole time? I'm sure How? many. I'm sure many other booksellers will say that their mothers taught them to read, and the joy of a book. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I was reading and collecting books from a young age, uh, but not seriously as an antiquarian collector. Uh, until oh, about thirty, uh, about thirty years ago, and then started rather slowly. What type of books? Adventure books, oh. exploration, nonfiction. Uh, I wanted to. I was a lover of history, 
Mm -hmm. And and wanting to explain, I was asking too many questions. Why is this all happening today? Mm -hmm. Well, generally when the special events of the day are driven by something that happened 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. That that was the start of the issues that the civil rights issue. I grew up in Southern California with the civil rights uh, uh, issues that were raised then. I uh, went through, and that was obviously very traumatic for people of my generation. Mm -hmm. and, Transformational. Uh, and the Vietnam War issues. Mm -hmm. And that really drove me to go, well, why is all this happening? Okay. I've been known to ask too many questions and think too deeply about things. Uh, and that's why I've really focused in on nonfiction as opposed to fiction. And that obviously that limits my focus, mm -hmm. but to me it explains a lot of things. It opens up a lot of worlds. Anything you're curious about with that curious mind, there's a book for that. There's a genre for that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And there's an explanation. Mm -hmm. Many times, many perspectives of many explanations. So how do you tell uh, the world what you specialize in? What would you, what, are, what do you call David Spillman fine books specialization? Social well, movements, history? Well, my, my taglines are exploration, history, and adventure of the world. Mm, I like that. And, uh, and those are the general subject matters. Uh, I break down my books into those types of categories. Mm -hmm. And then I also have a little bit of this and that. Okay, Just we all need that. All sorts of other stuff. So well, how long ago did you uh, start David Spillman Fine Books as a company? I have to ask. Well, I started that uh, really in around 2012, 2010, 2012, okay. to start developing that. I, uh, I knew that I needed to learn more about the book selling business mm -hmm. because I had always been in public service mm -hmm. and never in retail. So I had to learn all about being a retail bookseller. Mm -hmm. And so I went to Caps oh, okay. in 2010. Awesome. And that was amazing. Mm -hmm. that, that really gave me the foundation of what I needed to start asking more questions mm -hmm and developing my book selling business. And then ultimately I went to CAPS again in 2017 because I then at that time knew the questions that I yeah. needed to ask. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and knew the focus. Uh, right after that, I uh, was able to apply for uh, membership in ABAA mm -hmm. and uh, became friends with uh, many of the ABA members mm -hmm. and uh, and think of them as uh, my mentors. Yeah. Uh, trying to emulate their ethics mm -hmm. and their style of doing business. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's tremendously important to me. Mm -hmm. Being in public service, the primary thing was the ethics. Yeah. involved. Mm -hmm. And I know that there are some out there laughing about that. Oh, yeah, right, ethics. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, in local government, the lower in the government that you get, the closer to the people, mm -hmm. the greater the responsibility yeah. and the greater the ethics. And so I very clearly did not want to get into any kind of a business or any kind of an issue that didn't hold business standards and professional standards at a high standard. 
and I knew early on that I wanted to become an ABA member because that represented what I came from Yeah, in being a government official mm -hmm. it's and the Government Finance Officers Association of America. I think we can all tell it, it means something means something to you because well, it stands it does. for something because it, it stands for something yeah and those stories that you tell uh, with your material uh, how do you transmit those stories and those wonderful ethics and this the the gravitas well, that you give it do you, how do you how do you transmit that to to your buyers well I uh, I write descriptions bibliographical descriptions, mm -hmm. and then what I refer to as narrative descriptions, mm -hmm. uh, verbosely. <laughs> <laughs> I call that inform uh, information but, dense. Right, we like I mean, that. <laughs> I, I want to tell the story of why this book is important. First, I describe the book yeah. in bibliographical detail sure. because I'm an analytical type of person and I want to know what am I looking at. Yeah. And then after I say this is what this book is, then I want to say, why is this important? Mm -hmm. What does this mean? Mm -hmm. what, are the, what are the other things that were going on at the same time that this particular Antarctic expedition was happening or this particular Arctic expedition or Cook's expeditions mm -hmm. of the Pacific? Mm -hmm. What was going on in the world, and why was this being driven? Uh, go behind the story of the expedition itself. That's right, the story and why under the is story. This important. Yeah, and that's been fun. You're teaching. Oh, it's yeah. it's been great fun. I, uh, if I had not gotten into public finance mm -hmm. and a government career. I think I would have become a college professor, history professor. Mm -hmm. uh, and the neat thing about it is being a bookseller allows me those types of skills or yes. those types of, of outlets. Mm -hmm. Very much uh, so. And again, at my, uh, there are some that say, my wife keeps telling me, you know, not everybody really wants to know the whole story behind that book. <laughs> they just want to buy the book. But somebody does. <laughs> somebody <They> might. <laughs> it's important to me to explain what I know, to, to give my... I'm a newbie at this, obviously. Mm -hmm. But when I research a book, it's important to me to explain that. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten many thanks mm -hmm. from customers uh, about the research work that I've done mm -hmm. in trying to explain it. And mainly, I'm also trying to explain it to myself. Absolutely. You're feeding that curious mind that right. drew you to this right. in the first place. It's very exhausting sometimes. <laughs> it can be, <laughs> yeah. Well, clearly, you are adding value to your material and to to the trade. I, I've got to ask you, if you, when you were beginning the business, you, you, you looked to it, and now that you are in it for almost a decade or so, oh, how is your impression of what this world is different than what you thought it would be? <clears throat> how is it the same? Well, uh, being, I'm, I'm also involved as the treasurer of IOBA. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is another whole group of booksellers, very diverse. Mm -hmm. The booksellers of ABAA are also a very diverse group. And I think that is that's something that I hadn't picked up on because the more that I, that I sit down with other booksellers and listen to their stories or, or 
seeing their discussions that mm -hmm. we have, the extensive discussions on issues yeah. on the Discuss email list is absolutely fascinating to me. And this business is, let me, let me put it a different way. Running cities is about the same. Mm -hmm. It all depends on what the size of the city is. Book selling is from A to Z in terms of business models, in terms of, of how you approach the selling of, of your specialty mm -hmm. or, you know, and your market. And that's what's just absolutely fascinating. I didn't realize that. And I'm learning constantly uh, from others and saying, gee, that looks interesting. That looks interesting. I should do something like this. And it's exhausting sometimes. <laughs> it can be exhausting. <laughs> Well, it sounds like you have a great handle on the the um, amazing uh, benefit from being in an organization so diverse and in a world that is endlessly satisfying to a curious mind, to an intelligent mind. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges that you see mm -hmm. as a bookseller running your own business within the organization? Mm -hmm. um, you seem like you have a great handle on how to overcome those challenges, like from your city work. But so help us identify, how can we, well, how can we look to the future? Uh, are fairly, fairly well known, fairly standard. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the race to the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the, uh, uh, the, chal the challenges of connecting the book in your hand to the right buyer mm -hmm. at the right price. Mm -hmm. uh, the challenges with uh, competing against Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, the challenges of, uh, of working with uh, book selling sites, a biblio and the like. Uh, many of the discussion emails circle around those issues mm -hmm. that are being raised, the challenges. The EU created the GDR regulations for websites. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I was now reading EU regulations to ensure that my website was compliant, was compliant, yeah. For Europe. Yeah. Now, I don't have a big market there yet, but my website needs to be compliant. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was yeah. challenging. I never did that before. There's an endless list. Um, so I guess the, the thing I have to ask, and I think I know the answer, or I can guess the answer, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I, uh, I do too. The challenge is this, this is essentially my third career. Okay. And the key is to keep active, to keep, to keep, to keep up with those challenges, mm -hmm. to challenge yourself to do better things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and yeah, it's worth it. Good, it is. And, and it's especially worth it. I just had this here today. It's especially worth it, worth it when a customer comes in, finds the book that they had in their childhood yeah. that they've been looking for, and I just happened to have it. It was one of my this and that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just happened to bring it and there was that connection, and they were just so thankful for that. Well, that's that's a reward. That's in the and of itself. Absolutely. Well, I wish you many years of experiences like that. Thanks for teaching and being curious. Thanks for rising to the challenge. I agree with you. It's worth it. Great. Great. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you, David. Thank you, Kara.